Here's a look at some of those times when contestants decide to throw down on Master Chef. You know what work is, okay? Shh, no! You're such a snob. And this contestant right here really stirred the pot with his arrogance. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm talking about this person right here. <laughs> oh, Christian, Christian, Christian. What a handful, right? Well, it all started with the mystery box challenge. <laughs> The contestants were tasked with creating one amazing vegetarian dish. I'm talking a hardcore vegetarian dish, and the contestants weren't too thrilled about the idea. It's all vegetables. I'm like, Well, you have to agree. Making a vegetarian dish is far harder than cooking meat, right? Is it just me who thinks this, or what? Either way, as the contestants got busy with the challenge, there was this one contestant who felt threatened by Jennifer's culinary skills. So what did he do? Well, he just buried that feeling under a mountain of cockiness. I think she's a bitch, and uh, she's gonna get what she deserves. And wait till you hear what he said next. Thinks that she can cook better than me. I'll cook her on the table any day of the week. Despite Christian's confidence, what he actually produced said otherwise. Individual who got tripped up. The lack of protein, no meat, no fish. But wait, that wasn't all. Put that person into obscurity. The famous chef finally revealed who he was talking about, and Christian's face dropped to the floor. Christian! Man, it must have felt super humiliating to have served the worst dish, especially after acting all high and mighty like he did. And Ramsey definitely took him to task over it. It wasn't cohesive. It wasn't properly thought through. But that's not all. And the whole sort of style of the dish was strange. It wasn't just Chef Ramsey who wasn't a fan. It never is, is it? We didn't expect it from you. It was really something subpar. We were very disappointed. Oh man, that must have stung real bad. However, Christian decided it would be a great idea to fire right back. I think you're wrong. I don't think my dish is the worst dish here. The nerve, I tell you, man. I mean, no one in their right mind would dare to speak against Joe or any of the judges for that matter, especially after serving something as horrendous as this. But what's more, Christian didn't stop at that. He decided to, straight up, throw more than a few people under the bus, all the while trying to make himself look superior. Astro's dish looked pretty Think what you want. But Joe was just done with the nonsense, and he put Christian in his place. Well, you have the right to disagree, but we're telling you the way we see it, and we thought the dish sucked. However, Christian remained adamant. With every single criticism that was dropped in his direction, he shot back with more and more disagreement. The famous chef's patience was wearing thin, and it wasn't long before he burst out. Well, we're trying to give you constructive criticism. If you were a man, you'd take it on the chin. What he said next? I don't know, it just really hit the spot for me. Unfortunately, your talent's not matching your arrogance. The dish was a letdown. End of story. The famous chef's anger was totally justified. The judges were there for a reason, and they wouldn't let anyone, let alone a crappy cook like Christian, belittle them. But this argument was nothing compared to what happened in this next episode. You know what work is? Shh, okay? Please, no, please. no, I got where I got because I work. Now season five was absolutely insane as a baseline. And if you've ever binged it like I have, you'll agree that it's probably one of the most chaotic seasons ever. And things got seriously heated all the way back in episode two, which was the first mystery box challenge of the season. Bananas, strawberries, blueberries, brandy, lady fingers. The contestants were tasked with preparing a dessert, and the home cooks had 90 minutes to whip up their dish. The drama kicked off right from prep, when Chef Ramsay came over to Elizabeth Station and asked her a pretty nerve-wracking question. Who's gonna screw up tonight? Why Leslie? To make matters worse, Chef Ramsay started to pry into the obvious tension between the two. Cause he's, <laughs> cause he, he, he likes to flap his jaws and, and not cook so much. Oh, Leslie was getting pissed. And all you had to do was take a look at her face to see that. Talk that too much. And the next thing you know, he decided to stand up for himself. I've never said anything to you, Elizabeth. You want to get ugly? Let's get ugly. You don't know where the hell I've been. Okay, first things first, Leslie's reaction was completely justified. I mean, he wasn't getting into her business, so it wasn't fair for her to react like that. But was she gonna stop? You know, something tells me that she wasn't. I live in Malibu. Oh. However, Leslie decided that enough was enough. You wanna know why I live in Malibu, sweetheart? It's because I work my ass off. Do you know what work is, okay? No, you don't get to shush him. You started all this nonsense. And Leslie was not gonna shut his mouth in the face of a little bit of shushing. No, I got where I got because I work. Oh, I know, I know. She didn't exactly digest the fact that he earned his place in Malibu. It wasn't just handed to him. I worked so hard to get where I am. Obviously your wife works and you don't. So what's the big deal if this guy stays at home while his wife works? 
There are tons of stay-at-home moms out there, and I don't see anyone riding over them. So why the double standard when it's a guy, huh? What happened to equality? Isn't that what we want? Plus, let's not forget that being a homemaker doesn't mean that you're not working hard. Those folks are juggling a ton of shit at home. I know my mom definitely did. It's kind of funny how she keeps going after him with words like that. It's like she's super insecure. I mean, if she's just jealous, why not just admit that? As for Leslie, he was beyond pissed. Go on your to me about where I live. Figure out how I got there. Earmuffs. And well, he just had to get it off his chest. I work. You want drama? I'll give it to you. You ain't seen yet. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay, who had been a silent witness this entire time, decided to intervene. Leslie. Yes, What's sir. going on? I've never even spoke to this girl, and they say all I do is talk, talk, talk. Leslie felt like Elizabeth was just jealous because he spoke to everyone else and not her. Probably she was just looking for a chance to vent or something. But the famous chef wasn't willing to let personal rivalry take the stage. He decided to pull it together and remind Leslie that he was the eldest on the show and it was high time that he started behaving so. And like the mature man that he is, he decided to do just that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Yeah, the man handled it like a pro and apologized right away. It just goes to show that people who can own up to their mistakes are really the ones who are the most sure of themselves, not insecure guys like Christian. But I can't say the same for my next pick. If there's one moment from season 5 that really stood out, then it was definitely the intense showdown between Dan and Cutter. Now this moment right here brought a whole new level of drama to the series. It was the elimination challenge, and the contestants were tasked with preparing something totally unique. Please, head back to your stations. As the winner of the previous challenge, Courtney was tasked with creating seven teams in pairs of two. And I'm sure you can figure out that it wasn't going to be a common collected pairing process. Cutter with Dan. Wow. To pair Dan and Cutter was probably the worst decision ever, and you'll see why in a minute. The challenge hadn't even begun entirely, and there was already a lot of tension in the air. You're still making two separate, you see what I'm saying? If you're doing vegetables and fish, I'm doing protein and meat. We're not marrying the dishes together. These grown-ass men couldn't even agree on one protein without getting all frustrated. So you can bet that the rest of the challenge was bound to be a total mess. I mean, here's Cutter's point of view. He is not listening to what I'm trying to tell him. These proteins don't go together. You need something to balance. Dan, on the flip side, was totally stuck. He just couldn't decide. He's going into Dan shutdown mode. He still can't figure out what all vegetables he's using. So when it was time to grab all the stuff from the pantry, both Cutter and Dan totally threw away their chance at getting enough ingredients for their surf and turf meal. We have two proteins that do not pair together and seven items out of the pantry. And when Chef Ramsay came over to their station during prep, he could already see that things weren't going so well. And a warm tuna salsa, like a soy sauce with tuna chunks on it to go over the top and eat it like sashimi style. Apparently, they plan on topping their dish with tuna chunks sashimi style. And we all know how sashimi is served. Raw. But Dan had different plans. Right, why is it cooked then? Are we definitely on the same page? Chef Ramsay was obviously worried for them. Guys, are we okay? Cutter? It was this very question that finally did it for Cutter, and he didn't hold back. No, I ain't okay. I ain't gonna lie. No, I ain't okay. Cutter's frustration was completely justified if you ask me. I am just so pissed off at Dan Wu right now because, I mean, he just does not listen to me. But that's not all he was concerned about. I know I'm probably going into a pressure test because I have an idiot as a partner who just wouldn't listen to me. Chef Ramsay had enough and told him to get it together. Because there's no way these guys had any of chance of coming out of the elimination test safe and sound. And while Cutter was flipping out, Dan was super chill. And things aren't going perfectly, and I'm like, let's not worry about it, let's just put something on a plate. It was time for the judges to taste, and the reaction to the dish was shocking. Or maybe not so much. What in the f is that? The pantry was stocked with all the ingredients they could have possibly needed, and yet this is what they came up with? The famous chef was not impressed. He needed an explanation, and he needed it fast. He has an idea, I listened to him, I told him I didn't like it, he just starts grabbing and this is what you get, ran out of time in the pantry. Dan tried to explain the situation as calmly as possible, but Cutter was not having it. That neither one, they're both lean and they don't go together. We didn't get enough ingredients to really make anything work. Oh man, he was really riled up, that's for sure. You didn't know, have an idea, you didn't have anything real in what you wanted to do, you were just grabbing stuff and you kept telling, we'll get it as we go. Seeing how things were, Dan was willing to take responsibility for what they had made. But just you wait till you see Cutter's side of the story. Decent. Through all the stuff, I think it actually came out tasting decent. Uh, I doubt that. And well, even Chef Ramsay agreed. That is possibly one of the worst dishes in this competition so far. Plus, oh, by the way, guess what Joe did when it was his turn to judge? 
I guess you already know what he was about to do next, huh? Do the honors. Dad took full responsibility for the situation as Cutter dreaded the upcoming pressure test. Now, getting into an argument with a fellow contestant is one thing, but a judge? Yeah, that's a whole different level of being messed up. And guess which judge they decided to pick on? Oh, Joe. Oh, no. Anyway, in season 4, Howard decided to spice things up a bit by rubbing Joe the wrong way. It was episode 9 during the elimination round, and the cooks were even given a detailed demonstration by none other than Lydia Bassanich herself. Smooth and buttery and soft. You continue the kneading. Yeah, an absolute legend in the culinary sphere. Far more than her son will ever be. Anyway, when the cooks got busy, Joe walked over to Howard's station for a quick update. Howard admitted that he wasn't very well versed in making pasta. Despite that, he planned on making a braised chicken and bell pepper filling for his agnolotti, which Lydia found rather unusual. Pay attention, you know, we talk a lot about textures and all of that. I will do so. What are you doing with the asparagus? To make things worse, when Joe quizzed him about the asparagus, guess what he had to say? I'm not sure yet. Wow. All right, good luck, Howard. Thank you. Yeah, no, doesn't sound very exciting. Not a single bit. Anyway, cut to the tasting, and Howard's confidence took a nosedive. He wasn't feeling too sure about it, but he hoped that the flavors would make up for it. Braised chicken, and then it's spiced with a little cumin. Yeah. However, Lydia wasn't buying into his idea of adding cumin. And the taste was just like what she expected. Disappointing. It's not harmonious with a pasta dish like this. She actually had to remind him to not go overboard, especially with pasta. However, when it was Joe's turn, well, he certainly did not inherit his mother's sweetness. The whole thing with you is you have this very cavalier attitude. You don't know what you're cooking. The next thing you know, Joe was showing Howard who was the boss around these parts. And I got screwed up and I'm getting tired of it because if you were smart, you would duplicate a plate. Damn, that was brutal. In fact, Joe went as far as rambling about how ignorant Howard was being in the competition so far. And guess what? Just as Joe was about to taste his dish, Howard decided to interject. You want 15 of the same dishes up here? Well, it literally pushed Joe over the edge. That man simply lost it. Putting your spin on everything you make because you want to show us how cutesy and intelligent. And nope, once you unleash the beast, there's no stopping him. Well, that's going to get you a one-way ticket back to wherever you came from. And then you could show your friends and the six people who told you were good. I mean, when a MasterChef judge drops a line like that, you know they mean business. So, yeah, Howard's chances of getting the boot were definitely sky high. And Joe made it crystal clear that if Howard didn't change his attitude, he'd be stuck cooking at dinner parties while the rest of them shot for the stars and either became the next master chef or culinary powerhouses in their own right. See, the challenge was all about nailing the dish and then elevating it to the next level. But Howard was only focused on the fancy stuff and forgot to get the basics right. Worse than a cook who can't boil is a narcissist in full denial. Thank you for nothing. But Howard wasn't going to stop being his same old disrespectful self so soon. Ah, uh, Joe's just the This is a competition about flair, about finesse, about creativity. Honestly, it just sounds like he was trying to cover up his failure. Anyway, when it was time to send someone packing, Chef Ramsay said it like it was. One of you has reached the end of the road. And guess who decided to make a bold move? Howard. Yup, Howard got the boot for being too full of himself and making the worst annulotti out there. Honestly, it was about time. Anyway, if you thought cooks and judges squabbling was uncommon, then I don't know, go watch literally any other of my videos because you're dead wrong. In the meantime though, here's something that's actually uncommon, one judge throwing down against another. Yup, so I'm talking about episode 19 of season 10 and the contestants were very close to the finale. And you know what that meant, the challenges were about to ramp up big time. Now, tonight you'll be making homemade sausages. Now, I'm pretty sure that everyone knows by now that making sausages all by yourself is a task. But Aaron stepped up to show everyone how to make a perfect sausage. Now we're gonna add some beautiful acid. We have some cider vinegar. Aaron was all gentle and precise, making sure that each and every sausage looked and tasted the best. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is add the bit that has the actual casing to it, okay? As for Dorian, who was initially a bit nervous, caught onto Aaron's vibe and got inspired. It's really amazing how seeing someone else do their thing with skill can really uplift your spirits. Watching Chef Aron and seeing how he's bringing his culture he's making is definitely an inspiration. Sometime later, Dorian was killing it. Looks like Aaron's pep talk actually got through to her, and it wasn't just empty words after all. It's smelling good up here. Keep going. Thank you. That is so good. She decided to show off her southern roots with her dish. She whipped up some beans and tomatoes with a hint of garlic, and to get this, she decided to poach her sausages in a sauce that's actually inside the sausage. 
Wow, who'd have thought of that? Even Aaron and Joe were impressed with the idea. What I really like about what you're doing here is that you're reinforcing the flavors of the actual sausage into other components of the dish. Safe to say that Dorian was off to a great start. And when it was time for the tasting, she didn't disappoint. Sausage looks hearty, and that wonderful bean stew underneath it, it's got dive in all over it. Dorian presented the judges with a wild boar, fennel, and apple sausage with cannellini beans. The famous chef hadn't even tasted the dish, and he was already a fan of it. Love the idea of the, the toasted slices on the top. It tells me it's going to scream of texture and dark, rich flavors. Everything on that plate was just perfection, but Joe wasn't exactly feeling it for some reason. Yeah, I disagree. I think the toast cheapens the dish. Ramsey was obviously weirded out by his opinion. I mean, it's garlic bread. Who doesn't like garlic bread? So you don't serve garlic bread in your restaurant? No. That was just straight up offensive in Chef Ramsey's book. Oh, excuse There's me. no such thing as garlic bread in Italy. So <laughs> I think it cheapens it and makes it less than it could be. Oh no, the famous chef wasn't having that. Why the garlic bread? That's the, kind of that's the kind of restaurant you guys go to. Would you like a No, I don't want any garlic bread. You're such a snob. The fact that he just called Joe a snob on national television honestly made my day when I was watching this live. And it's for sure my guilty pleasure when I need a pick me up. Anyway, finally, Joe gave in. Once he dug into the dish, he couldn't help but compliment it for its unique flavors. It's sweet, and uh, tomatoes and beans really work together. The sausage itself is a wonderful texture. Pretty wild, right? Two judges just not seeing eye to eye doesn't happen every day, but poor Dorian, right? Anyway, could you think of more times when chefs lost it on MasterChef? Or hell, even the judges? Don't forget to let me know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to visit my social media pages, drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. Plus, if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see my next video right here since it's even better.